with that being said, um, I stepped down from Sakari. Uh, Hassad is no longer Sakari. Um, I stepped down from Sakari. Um, and uh, half of you probably seen the live show or seen, most of y'all probably seen uh, Hassad's video. And half of y'all probably seen Chief's video, right? Um, somebody said, did Chief say they do have salvation? No, just rewind the video, sister, and you'll get the context of why we're even talking about the Gentiles. Um, so I, I do want to speak on this matter. And I also want to speak on a couple of things that um, Chief said on his live last night, right? And at the end of this, I'm going to give you guys a shocker, right? So, um, I should step down because brothers may be like, why isn't Deacon here? He was, he, he's correct. Exactly. I said that he said, um, no, ask the camp if you, if they want you to step down. So I asked the camp if they want me to step down, they said, uh, no, they didn't want me to step down. Um, but that, that I'm not going to go super into detail, but that was the hot water me just not showing up for the 4th of July weekend. But I, I eventually ended up going and I did apologize to the camp because we are required to be there and um, I didn't show up, right? Oh man, this is so sad. It, it is sad. It is sad. This is why yesterday it was so hard for me to address the, the, the community, to address our nation. It is sad, it's heartbreaking, it is. And the only, the only way I could even do this video today is because I was able to talk to our brother Alizar after his live show, talked about what would happen moving forward. And I wanna just say this, there is always a chance of reconciliation because that is the spirit of Yahweh Shai. I just wanna make that be known. Y'all are saying there's so much more. What happened? What this ain't adding up, nigga. This ain't math class. We don't need you to add up. <laughs> we're, perfect. we're not telling you everything because you don't need to know everything. It ain't none of your business. What's already said is what y'all need to know. We don't owe you guys an explanation, and that doesn't mean we don't love y'all. But we deem it necessary, or rather unnecessary, to go in depth as to why where we are is where we are. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying. Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Now, this is a Gentile woman. This is a heathen woman. And she's confessing her faith in Jesus Christ. This is the treatment that he gives this Israelite woman versus the treatment that he gives this Gentile woman. Yeah. He completely ignores her. Right. The, and the, then... The, the, disciples, the disciples ignored her too. Exactly. That's what I'm about to point out. Because what a Christian will go to and saying in here is saying, well, he's just testing her faith. So what we'd have then to uh, we would have to then believe, Deacon, is that Christ and the disciples had a huddle, and the woman was off in the distance, and Christ said, "Hey guys, hey look, hey Thomas, hey Bartholomew, <laughs> this woman's about to come up to us. Just go along with it." No, that's nowhere in the Bible. Then the disciples came and besaw him, saying, "Send her away, for she cried after us." Now, who taught the disciples? Christ did. Why would they have it in their minds if Jesus taught them that he joined, that he was coming to save everybody? Why would they think it okay to send her away? Or to come up to him and say, send her away, for she cried after us. He answered and said, I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Clear point to the, the clear to the point, but let's keep going. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. She worshipped him and acknowledged him as Lord and begged him, help. This is a human being, Deacon. It said, help. But he answered and said, it is not me or it is not right to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. Mm -hmm. Now, the children, who are the children within this context? The Israelites. But who are they the children of? The children of God. So there is a clear separation and juxtaposition. I love the word. I use it all the time. There is a clear separation and juxtaposition between the children of God and the heathen and the Gentiles. And not only does it say the uh, the Gentiles or the heathen, but it calls them animals. It calls it refers to them as lower than human. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Racha Hakodash, 
and double honors to the elder apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you, brethren, you fellow believers of this faith. That includes you sincere sisters in, and brother, brethren and sister in, and shalom to the elect. So anyway, um, I was looking at Elder Apostle Tar's video. I'm going to make this a twofold video, a kind of kind of go into the situation with the deacon um, Haka and brother Hassad, right? And I'm going to read some comments. And then Lord's will, we'll get into the uh, Seraphonician or the Canaanite woman and go into that and where they go off on that. That, that was an old One West doctrine, by the way. Um, the scripture says in John 16 and 13, I believe it says, when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. So you're supposed to grow in the faith. Now I'll say this before I get started because, you know, no matter what we do as a great millstone, when we bring out these videos, we get so many haters. People, hey, I think they're getting haters now. So I don't know. You're always going to have haters. But I, I want to say, again, as I said up probably 50 times, I have no hatred towards Deacon and the Deacon and Hassad. I still do think, you know, honestly, that they're, they're, they're good teachers. They just go off on doctrine. But I do think they know how to teach. And everything, uh, for the most part, that is coming out came all from their elders who taught them. That, that's what a lot of you people don't understand their elders which come under great millstone that's what you people don't understand so there should be a level of respect there for that as well we you know we didn't see that a lot especially with the deacon and um uh, what's his name alazar hassad solid seems like a solid brother you know he doesn't he doesn't get caught up in all that so um um, I'm not here as a, in, in, you know, pushing a hate campaign, but I am going to say, uh, if you're going to be doing these kind of videos explaining uh, why you broke up, then you you should be given context, you know, because the people are going to want to know you have an audience. See, with us, if somebody leaves, they just leave. You know, you'll still see the brother out still teaching, and they won't know the wiser. You know, they'll say, okay, he's teaching, and then. Sooner or later, oftentimes we reconcile and come on back. But nobody really knows, you know. So maybe their organization is a little different. And they, you know, because of they, they hold on to that brand, Sakari, and uh, it's going to look different. So maybe that's why they have to explain themselves. Um, but I'm going to read a couple of comments. And Lord's will, I'll get to some scriptures and uh, go from there. And then we'll go into the, a little bit of to the the uh, Seraphonician woman or the Canaanite woman. Somebody said, this is horrible. I only listened to four speakers, Sakari, Deacon, Gorilla, Taz, Hassad, Hassad. These brothers have taught me so much. Deacon, you were the first I listened to and then Gorilla. I'm saddened by the news. And again, it seems kind of like soap opera, so to speak. You know, I, I, I mean, it's. I understand in a sense, because these are like younger, younger crowds. And, you know, this kind of social media today is they all, they all caught up in that mindset of, of, of vanity, so to speak. That's what I see. I'm not going to say, uh, that the brothers are like that, but the people who follow, they have a lot of vanity. You know, it's like they're celebrities to them. Right, you know, I, I'm I was like that when I came in the truth. I seen the apostles and bishops and brothers teaching. You get you get taken by that and say, "Wow!" They, and then when we teach, other come up under us and do the same thing. But anyway, it says, "But I trust the Most High. You you guys' knowledge and leadership. I wish you all the best, but I do feel divided." So again, this seems like kind of like you know some social media type of thing maybe they had somebody to follow them I don't know but this is a scripture I'm going to read 2 Timothy 3 and 14 I mean it just seems like the words to try to put together is you know you're saddened because your favorite show 
was canceled off TV or something like that. I don't know. But it says, but continue thou in things which thou hast learned, right? And has been assured of. So you, their, their job is to teach you. Once you get the understanding and you become, you know, knowledgeable, then your job is to teach others. And that's the difference with us. We all push the elect, right? I think a lot of people look up, you know, to these teachers as they are the elect. You know, they may want them to be the elect. But here at Great Millstone, we push the elect, right? It says, and it, that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in the Messiah, Yahweh. All scripture is given by inspiration of Yahweh, of God, and profitable for doctrine, for reproof and, re and correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be per perfect. So, you know, at the end of the day, if you feel that they split or whatever, worry about the doctrine. And, and this is why we teach it's a, uh, about doctrine, correct doctrine, 100% truth doctrine. You know, not uh, what they call, what the scripture says, sound doctrine, which means whole or healthy doctrine. And that's what we teach. Like if, if there's some brothers that broke off from GMS and they went and got teaching, nobody would really know about it. But they would see when when uh, the videos go up, they will see the same doctrine being pushed. So whether this is a doctrinal difference, they say it has nothing to do with doctrinal. I think the deacon says he they have a particular order um, when they go to show up for the 4th of July to, to do the videos or whatever. Well, we don't worry about that. The scripture says, let the wickedly, wicked do wickedly. You know, but that's their thing. You know, that's not for us to say on that behalf. That's their thing. See, the thing is, once you get it going, you got to keep it going. The fight must continue, right? <laughs> the fight must go on. Uh, let me read it. I had a couple of comments, but I don't think I'm going to read all of them. I'm just going to read a couple. And then um, I'll go into the other part of the video. And hopefully make that real quick. <clears throat> Somebody said, not making much sense. Why title the video and tell us none of our, tell it is none of our business. You offered the information, right? Which is kind of true. There was some GMS brothers on there as well <laughs> doing a live stream. We everywhere. So yeah, you know, we're going to do videos. Not because, you know, to try to seek vain glory or attention or views. No, it ain't that. It's about uh, Jude the first chapter said you we we must contend for the faith you know and I kind of agree if you're gonna make it a business when when people say they hate they I've left GMS it's normally a doctrinal thing and they'll say well we didn't agree with this we didn't agree with that even one West you had a split and that was a doctrinal thing so and then you just go teach I mean that's what it's all about I don't understand why this thing is being made much harder than what it has to be and I, I think it's because of the audience you, you got the viewers you know it's just become one big soap opera that's that's my opinion I don't think all of it was necessary my opinion uh, but that's just as I say that's just my opinion um, let me go on somebody says I am sad this day I am a follower of Hassad wishing you the best it's not like he's going and quitting he just said in the video he's not he's going to continue to do the work that's the key and that's all we say just do the work but this is what happens when you bring up these posts and sit down this is why i left sakari and you don't really say why you left him and this is the reason why we're splitting off but you don't really say it these people are groupies they want to know. <laughs> I am sorry, Sakari, but the fact that you sitting there telling the whole congregation that you don't have to tell them what's going on is not cool. I'm not going to read the rest of that. They have their reasons. Um, I'm not going to go so much of that, uh, but I'll, I will read 
um, read a scripture. Um, this is Acts 5 and 39. It says, But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest happily ye be found even to fight against God. So, at the end of the day, um, if it's of the Lord, it's going to remain. I believe Hebrews 12 and 29, you know, it speaks of, uh, if it's of the Lord, the shaking and removing of things, if it's of the Lord, it will, re will remain. Um, this is going into the council. That's I think that's what I was just reading. Yeah. Yeah, if of God, if it's of the Most High, it's going to remain. So anyway, now we're going to get to the other part of the video, of Matthew 15, which goes to also Mark 7 and 24. Um, with it says a Greek Seraphonician says here Matthew I'll try to get to this real quick and make this short Matthew 15 and I don't know where it is it says the faith of the Canaanite woman it says then Jesus Yahweh went thence and departed into coast of Tyre and Zidon and behold a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, Lord, O thou son of David. My daughter is grieved, uh, vexed with the devil. So before we get started there, just because you see a woman of Canaan, or the other text in Mark 7, 24, it says a Greek uh, by Sarah Phoenician. Let me see if I can go there. Let me jump there real quick. All right. Basically, of uh, uh, it looks to appear as, as of another nation, right? And we're going to go into that. Um, Tyre is a certain woman whose daughter was unclean, had unclean spirit. The woman was Greek, Seraphonician by nation. So everybody thinks, and see, that's what racism has do, uh, brought us in, in false history, that everybody that was Greek was all white, right? Greek is also comprised of many nations, believe it or not. That's not uh, a one nation, a white nation. It's multiple nations, right? Remember, we were scattered and were being called Greek, right? And in some cases, in the older translations, it was said we were called heathens, unbelievers, okay? It's a, a, of a Seraphonician nation. That's why it says, was a Greek a Seraphonician nation that tells you right there um, that where Greek is really just bringing the fact of of a, uh, a so-called another nation follower of another nation so to speak because you got to remember the Israelites were amongst other nations I mean you remember Jephune Jephune the Kenizzite that was Caleb's father right uh, and they was he was called the Kenizzite okay so we're going to go back here. A woman of Canaan, right? Um, it says here, Have mercy on me, O Lord, a son of David. Uh, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. So it says a woman of Canaan. So we're going to go here. Um, that's Mark. I don't need it. I'm going to stay in Matthew 15. And it says... Let me get Matthew 10 and 4. It says, the, the 12 apostles, and it says, Simon, which you see the zealot, but it says here, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. So we see, when you see, it's listen to the 12, right? But you see here, Simon the Canaanite. Does that mean, a lot of times when you see such and such, uh, uh, say Simon the such and such, it's talking about an Israelite of another nation. I mean, uh, yeah, that's fought, that borders another nation, like Jephune, the Kenizzite, right? Simon, the Zealot, Simon, the Canaanite, such and such, the such and such. That's most of the time that's talking about an Israelite that's bordered amongst another nation. So it doesn't always mean that they are that nation. That's why you don't have to see David the Judite, right? Um, so forth and so on. I just wanted to make that point. 
So let's go over here. There's a precept to that. Uh, the precept package. <laughs> um, this is Matthew. Um, I'm going to keep reading. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This is the same thing when you read the scriptures, it talks about enter not into the, in the uh, city of Samaria to eat ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Just as today, remember uh, Romans 15 and 4, everything was written up full time for our learning today. Even today, there are certain places we've taught at, we wiped the dust of our feet, we don't go down there no more because we put out the word. This is the important part about the elect, right? And this is why he said, go to the law sheep. And that's what we're doing. And that's the push, not to the sheep of Israel, but to the law sheep of the house of Israel, the elect that wants to get it. And this is why I brought up about going to the 4th of July parades and those uh, alternative lifestyle parades to push the truth. It's not necessary. Proverbs 4 says, enter not into the path of the wicked. It actually says that. And go not in the way of evil men. So the Lord just gave us a simple job, a simple solution. Go out there and teach. Not all this extra stuff, right? <clears throat> and then it says, um, Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, unto, and said, It is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Now, this is not the first time an Israelite woman would, <clears throat> would have been called a dog. In fact, um, before we came in the truth, what were we? What were we and what were our women? What were we? Let's get a description of Sirach. Sirach 26, 25. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. So what is this talking about? This is not always talking about other nations. This is talking about Israelite women. Right? That's where the, the problem comes. Because every time you see dog, they use that black ideology to push that only white women are dogs. When clearly Jeremiah 5 and 28 says our people have surpassed the deeds of the wicked. So that can't be true. Right? And some of those white women are Israelites, by the way. Anyway, but she that is shame faced will fear the Lord. So you see the situation here where they said what they said, but watch watch what happens. And she said, Truth, Lord. This is your shame faced, right? Yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Yahweh answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, shame faced. Let's go back to uh, Sirach. But she that is shame faced will fear the Lord, right? And the daughter was made whole from that very hour. So. Let's continue. Um, another scripture I pulled up. There's quite a few of these scriptures. This is called the Centurion's <clears throat> Great Faith. Now, when you go into history of, um, what's her name? Rahab, right? The hit out, the um, spies. Well, she knew, right? She knew. There's, there's a situation where she knew, and she just in straits, and she wanted her household protected, right? And um, that's their portion to serve the children of Israel. But in this situation, the Lord healed her because she was an Israelite. Now, when you go into John 4th chapter, what happened? Why didn't the Lord tell that woman, was it Samaritan woman, why didn't he tell her to repent and be saved? Nah, that didn't happen. Anyway, this is Saturian, which would have been a captain of a hundred, I believe. It says, and when G when Yahweh was entered in Capernaum, uh, there came out to him and the Saturian besieging him. Now you know this story about him being healed, right? Now I'm gonna just get to the point. Uh if you haven't read John eight, and it'll tell you the whole story. Um he wanted heal, healing. The centurion answered and said, O oh Lord, I'm not worthy that thou should come under my roof, but speak the word only that my servant shall be healed. 
For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. Yep, there we go. His centurion. And I said to him, to this man, go and goeth. Go and go. he goeth. And another come, and he cometh. And to my servant do this, uh, and he doeth it. I'm going to just get to the point. When Jehoshaphat heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found great, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Right? So you can see the examples of Jehoshaphat saying this a lot. This person has great faith. This person has a lot of faith because you had a lot of Israelites that was claiming to follow the laws, but they didn't have faith. They didn't have that level of faith. And this is why we must suffer, right? Because to suffer, that's when you need faith. When you don't suffer, you don't have a need for faith. That's why we're in a condition, and that's why the elect is being raised up through faith, right? It says, I'm not going to read the whole thing. It says, no, not in Israel. So they're making it seem like, well, wait a minute. This has, it was, it was heathens. They were all being healed because guess what? There was Israelites who wasn't following. They didn't have faith. That was the whole point of the Messiah in Acts 5 and 29 and John 8 and 11. Or, yeah, 8 and 11. That was the whole point. Yahweh shall to bring us back through faith. That's another thing these group go off on and, and, and push. We can keep all the laws. It's about the law. And well, Revelation 2 and 10 says different. It says, be faithful unto death. Right? This is Matthew 9 and 20. Real quick. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood, 12 years came behind him, touched touched him. Now, this woman could have been following of, a follower of many nations. That's why I don't say Greek. But we know this is an Israelite woman, right? And touched him, touched the hem of his garment, for she said within herself, if I may, but touch his garment. Now she had uh, a hemorrhage, what they call it, or maybe a, what you call your period. I believe that situation. And it says, I shall behold, but Yahweh turned him about. And when he saw her, he said, daughter, be of good comfort. And see, this is why we say rise up, ye women that are at ease, right? They're comfortable. So they don't have that kind of faith. But when these things start happening to you sisters and you start suffering, that's why you start waking up to the truth, right? Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. So you'll see some women may have good jobs and good careers and still follow the truth. But there's something in them that they understand that the society, the situation they're in is not right. So it's by faith. This also proves you had all these men that follow the law, law, law. But he's telling this woman, he's telling the, the, um, the uh, Seraphonician Canaanite woman, whatever you want to call her. And he's telling these, these women that you have great faith. He tells uh, the, uh, the, the satyrian, you have great faith. No, not even in Israel. Right? Remember, that's where Capernaum was. So that is, our people were scattered. Anyway, I uh, hope this lesson was edifying. That's all I have on that shallow one.